Hello. Today we're going to be unboxing the Curtis R3C from Fine Molds. This is the uh, fighter seaplane that was used in the anime Porco Rosso. The uh, design of the kit was personally overseen by Hayao Miyazaki. So it's supposed to be uh, very close to how the plane was imagined. Uh, it wasn't a real plane obviously because it's from a cartoon, but it does model itself after a lot of seaplanes and fighter planes that existed in the time that this anime tried to capture. Wow, that was very difficult to say. Anyhow, let's open it up and see how it looks. Okay, so I've opened this before. This was a new kit because I was excited. All right, so here we have our decals. A lot of yellow for the trim on the uh, wings and all that. It also has Curtis's little uh, insignia seat belt. I'm not sure what the white swath is for. Has decals for the dash, all the gauges. Some fuel decals or fuel fill up decals on the wings. And ooh, looks like some counterweights. Probably for the pontoons. And then some glass. And then we have some nylon rounds here that help the prop spin faster. So it just doesn't feel cheap when you spin the prop. That's a nice touch. Uh, my experience with the fine mold kits are, uh, I've, I've always been very happy with them. Uh, this will be the second fine mold kit I've put together. The third one I've bought. <laughs> Anyhow, let's move on. Take a look at the molds. So this is Curtis, Donald Curtis, the American from the uh, the anime. He was trying to make a name for himself. And he looks to be molded pretty accurately. No flash. They gave you a little pedestal to put him on. That's cool. Let's check out the back. Nice. Just a little bit of scraping. A little bit of sanding, no big deal for filing. It'll be fun to paint. I painted the Porco Rosso uh, from the other plane, and it was fun to do. I enjoyed it. Okay. Let's look at these super fine molds. So that's the wingspan. It's kind of a small model. It's a 148th scale. It was just a little fighter plane. Now this blue mold here it's so thin in spots you can see through it I'm not sure if you can make that out in the camera but maybe if I do this look at that you can see through it right at this edge here so I have to be careful with that I mean these are detailed molds you got this the metal stress and the flaps here all there very nice now it's so thin you can almost see some pin marks on the other side these two circles here if you flip it if you hold it in just the right light you can see them there you go maybe you see it that way okay so coat of paint might be a very good idea cover that up give it give the plastic a little more depth so it looks like it's gonna need it on these wings moving on okay mechanicals engines the actual pilot you see how small he is compared to the figure they give you they are not to scale there's the pilot it's supposed to be this dude so this little figure stands on its own it's kind of a, a bonus to the kit So he's in there, looks like he's uh, holding on to the yoke. There's the obviously your engine, cylinder heads maybe, exhaust, look like um, the Spitfire exhausts. Very small, very detailed, these feel nice. Uh, now sometimes these fine mold kits give you parts to display the 
the plane on like a, uh, a rail carrier or something like that. That may be what these little wheels are for. I'm not sure yet. Or this guy, this big square assembly. Now the mold is very nice. Just nothing thin here. Just how it's supposed to be. Alright, moving on to the rest of the plane parts. Okay, so there's the fuselage. Again, super thin. I got a little bit of deformation here. Get my fingernail on it. Here are his little gun pods. Look at that, that's pretty good. You can see the little castings for the uh, the holes so that it, the barrel is air-cooled. Then you have the uh, pontoon halves. And then there's his tail. Again, very thin at the edge here. It's, it's paper thin. You can see right through it. So I'm a little concerned about that, but we'll see. The other side. Pretty cool. Okay. I need that. Instructions. Now, the fine molds instructions, all three kits I have, the instructions are all in Japanese. That has not dissuaded me from putting it together. I actually enjoy putting this together. The pictures are drawn in a way that it's pretty self-explanatory. You know, just use your head. If you're worried, you can always do a Google Translate and figure out what half this stuff says depending on Google telling you the truth or not. You know, everything's written in Japanese. You only have the part numbers that are discernible in English, thankfully. But I built uh, Porco Rosso's plane using the Japanese instructions and I had zero problems doing it. Zero. I didn't look up any translations or anything. Just followed it but via the pictures. It's very simple. It's a very nice, these are very nice kits to find molds. There are the uh, counterweights for the pontoons, so the plane doesn't sit uh, tail heavy, I would guess. Moving on. Very simple stuff. They tell you not to glue the engine cover so you can see the motor and all that. They tell you how to detail paint both of the figures. And that is indeed some kind of a carrier for the planes. So you don't want to uh, hang it from a string or let it sit on the pontoon. Just, you can make this carrier so it looks like it's wheeled, wheeled around. That's pretty cool. The uh, Porco Rosso plane did that too. I did not build that for the Porco Rosso plane. The Savoia, if I remember right. Pretty simple. There's your uh, your decal setup, your uh, colors. Now there is some kind of a color guide. Ah, here we go. There's a color chart that has a handy dandy translation. So that's cool. So, so you can really just make this based on the colors. The colors are, co are coded with numbers. So let's see, number 65. 65 here, 65 here, in the blue, which is about right. He, you know, his, his clothes are blue, so that makes sense. You can you can do this. It's easy. All right. Now I'm sure there's some really cool backstory that they included with these instructions. You may want to get those scanned in and translate it, because there was possibly a real plane. And then they modeled the studio plane after the real one. That's why they gave it a weird name, RSC-0. Zero. zero is like a prototype number or something like that. Pretty cool. Interesting history. Alright, I think that's going to be it for this kit review. If you can get your hands on one, definitely do it. Fine mode kits are awesome super easy to put together and they have nice details. Thank you for watching.